Good morning, folks. We've got fewer stories today, but we'll get into a bit more detail with them. Cosmic rays on the rise again, and we've got weather and science news starting at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on our star, much like the last few, and once again, that's where the problem comes in. Very quiet and solar wind speed in purple, even though it is rising slightly this morning, spent the overnight flirting with sub-300 kilometers per second velocities, exceptionally weak. We've got 12 hours of KP0 right now, so moderate health concerns have indeed crept back for now with cardiac and mental health patients. Eyes on that for exacerbation today. So folks, how about getting 95% of your seasonal snowfall by this time? Not how much is expected by year's end, but through the winter months at the start of next year. Records annihilated thus far, and not without its effects on agriculture. This is Wisconsin, but almost the entire Midwest is behind this year due to the cold and snow. Illinois Winter Severity Index mapped through December 4th here, courtesy of weather.com, showing us where the winter thus far ranks as far as various locations. Purple is a top 1% worst conditions on record, and look at how many of them there are. Interesting to note the red in Nevada, indicating a mild run thus far, despite being next to that purple spattering. And literally within hours, this is what happened. Nice of Gaia to erase that red dot in Nevada moments after it was announced. Well, folks, this is what so many have waited for. The first results of the Parker Solar Probe. The satellite got insanely close to the sun on its latest flyby, will get even closer in just about five or six weeks in its next one, and is illuminating a number of mysteries in the solar system. First, while it has long been known that primordial dust permeates the solar system, it has been thought that at the sun, and actually at all stars, the violent plasma environment close by should be dust free. It's all been blown out by the solar wind or photoionized into gas and then blown away. This has actually been seen by Parker and is now official. The more interesting of its discoveries came in the solar wind, however, what they call switchbacks. They describe as magnetic reversals in the solar wind. Sort of like what we see every two weeks at Earth here with a phi angle flip, but much closer to the sun, and the solar wind is doing much more turbulent and complex flips with these reversals sometimes occurring within the streams themselves, apart from the interplanetary magnetic field. It is interesting that once again the focus falls on magnetism and plasma turbulence here. The sun was also seen blasting out many more energetic particles than they anticipated, many of which are too diffuse to be properly analyzed here at Earth. Again, next flyby is only a handful of weeks away in January, so more is coming. Up next, we're looking at what is being heralded as the first ever planet discovered around a white dwarf star. They say that they detect a disk accreting onto the white dwarf at a rate of about 7 million pounds per second. They say that spectral analysis of the disk metallicity indicates the presence of a planet, but folks, unlike every other such discovery, there are no pictures of this one. Their paper was posted to archive and it is truly just numbers and data returned on the region. No imaging of the planet or even the white dwarf itself. It's a cool animation they had, but short of the factual standard in our eyes. Up next, Denmark. You guys bored over there? I ask because when you see this many top scientists from the same country getting together on a paper, you presume it's going to be on something critical. Nope. Apparently, the question of whether tapping your beer can can reduce the interior bubble content was just too inviting. Great way to spend your time, guys. And by the way, they determined the answer is no. Last but not least, folks, we're getting a call to further credit spherical nova eruptions for the transients we see in the cosmos. While hemispheric blasts that get sculpted by magnetic fields are well known, there appears to be a lack of understanding on the prevalence of the spherical shell release in all directions. The core degenerates would be the field-shapen ones, but the coronal accumulation and plasma instability triggers indeed would provide that more spherical release, for those who don't know. A tiny version of this event is likely the ceiling recurrent event on our star. While only 14 recurrent nova are known, they say most have periods of hundreds to thousands of years, and we just haven't seen them yet in our hundred years or so of technological observation. Yesterday we discussed the movies that we made to catch you up on almost a decade of news and research, and one of those movies is Cosmic Disaster. If you are new here and haven't seen that one, get acquainted with Einstein's dying frustration, what the CIA tried to cover up, what shows itself cyclically through time and what already appears to be underway once more, magnetic reversal, solar micronova. 
We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.